My next guest says the president is not going far enough to protect the economy or American jobs. Chris Kobach is Kansas Secretary of State. He is a co-author of Arizona's controversial immigration law, and he is currently defending immigration policy in several border states. He joins us now from Washington. Chris, it's such a pleasure to have you. Thanks for joining us. So we realize you don't think that Obama is going too far, but from our perspective, from the Business Channel's perspective, help quantify the debate and where you stand on it. How many jobs well, is this example, costing America? Well, you can look at it that way. In terms, we know that there's about 11.3 million illegal aliens in the United States. Of those, about 7 million are in the workforce. And we've got 16 million Americans who are officially unemployed. And you add people who are underemployed to that, we've got about 25 million Americans looking for more work. Uh, it's a no-brainer. If you really want to create jobs for Americans, we need to start aggressively enforcing our immigration laws and looking after our own citizens first. And there are a lot of Americans trying to put food on the table. And this administration is scaling back enforcement, not ramping it up. Let me ask you, though, Chris, there are many that would say, if you look at the ripple effect, um, that perhaps these are small businesses employing a lot of these people. These are also people that are paying for taxes. They're consuming products. Um, are they not adding to the economy as well? Well, you're right, they are paying some taxes, but if you look at the total number, the net tax contribution, we're deeply in the red. Uh, the best study of this was done a couple of years ago by a, a person named Robert Rector over at the Heritage Foundation. It was estimated if you take into account all the sales taxes the illegal aliens pay, all the gasoline taxes, everything, we're still $89.1 billion in the hole at state, federal, and local government combined uh, every year. So the taxpayer is the big loser in this because the vast majority of illegal aliens are, are consuming consuming welfare programs, whether it be Medicaid, whether it be food stamps, school lunches, they're consuming so much welfare. Indeed, it's a, a, among illegal aliens, it's over 70% of them are consuming some form of welfare. I wanted to talk about what the solution is here. I was looking at this Congressional Budget Office estimate. They looked at a path to legalization. They said for, unauthor for unauthorized immigrants, a path to legalization would increase federal revenues by $48 billion, but would only incur $20 $23 billion of increased costs from public services. You agree with that estimate? And is that the argument to be made for figuring out how to legalize all these people living in our borders? Yeah, I, uh, that estimate doesn't take into account the really big ticket items. If you look at the total cost over a 10-year period of having an amnesty, it adds $2.6 trillion to our debt and deficit, uh, cumulatively the deficit, so to our debt over that 10-year period. That's the last thing we need to be doing right now because illegal immigration imposes such a f heavy fiscal burden. We're already trying to find ways to cut government spending. Uh, an amnesty would make it worse. And the other side of it, the other reason why this is the absolute worst time to consider an amnesty is you've got so many Americans out of work. You would not want to create an additional uh, class of unemployed people uh, in the United States. So right now we need to encourage illegal aliens to go back to their home countries, open up those jobs for U.S. citizens. If we really want to create jobs, let's start enforcing our immigration laws. So w by what process would you do that? And have you looked at what that would cost taxpayers? Well, one of the uh, items that's on the table in Congress right now, which I think actually stands a pretty decent chance of passing this year, is making the E-Verify system mandatory. That's the computer system that already 260,000 companies are using voluntarily, uh, where you just simply check on the computer, make sure the person's date of birth, name, and social security number or other number match, and the federal government verifies that the person's authorized to work in the U.S. Three states have made it mandatory, Arizona, South Carolina, Mississippi, it's working very well, and there looks like there might be an opening in Congress this year to get that through the House maybe even through the Senate and onto the president's desk. If that happens, that will start encouraging the uh, illegal population to leave because it's going to be much harder for them to work here. And that's a big magnet that keeps them here. All right, Chris, we have to end it there. Thank you so much for joining us. A contentious topic, but that was Chris Kobach today on with us, uh, Kansas Secretary of State.